Introduction to SAM, the Genetech System Availability Monitor. The System Availability Monitor, or SAM, is a built-in service for collecting and viewing Security Center system health information remotely from the Genetech portal. System integrators and technicians can view current issues for systems that are covered by a Genetech Advantage plan and can use this information to see if there are any potential faults or hardware issues that may need to be resolved in the near future. SAM can be used to collect health information from many different systems, so an integrator can get a good general overview of the status and availability of any systems they are responsible for. If a health problem occurs on one of the systems that has purchased the Genetech Advantage service, the technicians will be able to see that information from the Technical Assistance section of the Genetech portal and react accordingly, without having to wait for a call from the client. This means technicians can have a proactive response to problems and more efficiently schedule a service call in case of a hardware failure or a site visit in case a role or service is having issues. The System Availability Monitor is included as part of the Security Center installer as of version 5.3 SR1 and higher and only one monitoring agent is required per system. SAM consists of two components, the System Availability Monitoring Agent which is installed on the directory server, and the service in the cloud which collects the information from the agents and makes it available to authorized users via the Genetech portal. The Genetech Update service maintains the system availability monitoring agent, making sure it's on the most recent version of the software in case there are any updates. The SAM agent software will run on any operating system that is compatible with the current Security Center server requirements. To view the monitoring information from the Genetech portal, we recommend using one of the following browsers on the version listed here. Before going into the SAM interface, let's take a look at how the information is handled between the SAM service and the installed components on a Security Center system. On the Security Center server that's hosting the directory, we have the SAM agent installed, the Health Monitor role, which is responsible for recording and reporting any health issues on the system, and the Genetech Update service. The Health Monitor role is vital to receiving and relaying correct statistics by SAM, and for this reason the role should never be shut down or the database modified. There are three components that are used in the cloud. The first is the Auto Update service, which transfers upgrade packages to the Genetech Update service on the server and are applied to the System Availability Monitor agent. The Genetech Update service checks with the Auto Update service to see if a new version is available 5 minutes after a restart and every 6 to 12 hours afterwards. Updates to the System Availability Monitor agent are received as part of the regular Security Center packages received by the Update service. The second type of component is the Health Monitoring service, which collects the information from the SAM agents. When a user logged into the Technical Assistance page of the Genetech portal requests information from SAM, this request is sent to the Health Report Service. The Health Report Service queries the Health Monitoring Service and is responsible for relaying the data it receives back to the user logged onto the Genetech portal. All communication between the services, either on the directory, on the cloud, or between the two, is done using a secure encrypted channel. Once the System Availability Monitor agent has been installed, you'll need to decide what level of information collection you would like to have your system perform. This can be set to Do Not Collect Data, effectively turning off the monitoring service. Data will be collected anonymously, which sends information without any identifying system information and helps Genetech look for any potential issues. Or Data will be collected and linked to My System, which includes the information about the system it came from and will allow you to see the statistics and health information for your system on the System Availability Monitor. In order to activate this level of information gathering, the system must have a valid Genetech Advantage service associated with it. If you need more information on the Genetech Advantage program, please consult the Genetech website or speak to your regional sales manager. The data collection policy is prompted during installation, but if you wish to change it at a later date, you can do so by running the System Availability Monitor agent from the Genetech Program Group. Click on the Modify button next to the Data Collection status on top, and choose the level you wish to use from the pop-up window. 
To associate the SAM agent with the system, you must first browse to the system ID in the technical assistance section of the Genentech portal under System Management. From the System Availability Monitor section, click on the Generate Activation Code button and enter the code given in the SAM agent. You have 24 hours to enter the code in the agent interface, otherwise you will have to generate a new one from the Genetech portal. Hit OK when finished to return to the agent window, and close the window using the X on the top right corner. Please note that if any failover directories are configured on the system, they can be added to the list in the SAM agent. If the primary directory is not available, the SAM agent will cycle through the list until it finds a machine it's able to use. Now that everything has been configured on the server side, let's take a look at how to monitor systems from the System Availability Monitor. To get to SAM, log on to the Genetech portal and go to the Technical Assistance section. From the drop down menu on the top left, choose Technical Assistance, then the System Availability Monitor. From the main dashboard of SAM, the top of the page gives you an overview of any systems with errors. The total number of systems with errors will be shown on the left, along with a list of the current systems with errors and how many roles and devices are in an error state. This number represents the total number of roles or devices, not the number of errors. One role or device may have multiple errors associated with it, which we'll see in the system details in a few minutes. Next to the total errors is the last time the information was updated. The right side of the dashboard displays a list of the total number of systems with errors for the last week. Hovering over a day in the chart will display the date and the number of systems with errors. Above the dashboard, our breadcrumb trail is displayed on the left and the menu on the right next to the email address of the user who's logged in. The breadcrumb trail is an easy way to jump back to a previous section such as the Technical Assistance section of the Genetech portal, or the dashboard once we're investigating errors for a specific system within SAM. From the menu, we can manually refresh the page, or turn the Auto Refresh option on or off. By default, the Auto Refresh is turned on, and will refresh the page every 5 minutes. Below the overview is the list of total systems that are associated with your account. On the top of the list, there's a search box to look for a specific system based on the client name or system ID, and a checkbox to filter the list to only display systems with errors. For each system, we can see the name of the client associated with the system, the system ID, the last time the information for this system was updated, and the statistics for the directory servers, roles, and devices associated with that system. The numbers in each of these columns will tell you how many of each are currently up and functional, and how many there are in total. For a system to be perfectly functional at the moment, both numbers should be the same in each one of these three columns. Clicking on a column header will sort the list, first in descending order, then in ascending order, and finally back to unsorted. Sorting by the number of directories, roles, or devices will sort the total number of entities in an error state. For example, if a system has 100 devices and 25 are in an error state, it will appear higher on the list than a system with 200 devices that have 10 in an error state when sorting by descending order. To see more information on the status of a system, click anywhere in the line from the list of systems. The overview page on top will change to show the general information for this system. On the left, we have the last time the information was updated, as well as the name of the system, the system ID, and the end user, integrator, and distributor of the system. In the center, we can see a graph of how long the directories were active in the last seven days, as well as how many directories, roles, and devices are currently down on the system. The circle represents the number of entities that are down out of the total. Hovering over one of the circles will give you the exact number of entities down and the total number of entities. As we saw in the previous chart, hover over a day to show the exact date and the directory availability. In the entity list below, we can again filter the list using the search box, 
which will look for the string in any entity below, and restrict the list to only show entities that have errors. Next to the Errors Only checkbox, we can limit the time range we want to consider for our results. There are quick presets to use the previous day, week, or month, but we can also click on the calendar to select a custom date range. From the Selection pop-up window, click on either the Start or End Date on top to choose which one to modify, and then choose a date below. Use the arrows next to the month and year to increase or decrease the value, and click on a day in the calendar below to select that date. Note that you cannot choose a date that's in the future. Hit OK when the start and end dates are correct, and the list of results will be updated. In the list of results, each category of entities, directories, roles, and devices, will have a summary of the available statistics for all entities in that category. Click on the plus next to the category name to expand it, which will show all the individual entities. Click on the history bar to bring up a chart showing the number of errors over the time range selected. Hover over the chart to see the exact numbers for a date and time range. Click on the X on the top right of the chart to close it, or click on the history bar for that entity again. We can only see the history chart for the entity category in total, the individual history bars are visible from the expanded entity list, but not in chart format as we saw for the category. Looking at the statistics available, the first one is the percentage of uptime for the entity. This is the time the device was active, or uptime, divided by the total of the uptime and downtime. After the history bar, we have the individual numbers for the uptime and downtime for an entity. The last two columns display the MTBF, or mean time between failures, and the MTTR, or mean time to recovery. The MTBF is the average uptime for the entity between errors or downtime. MTTR is the average of how long the entity was down for, or how long it took to get the entity back into an online state. Clicking on the number in the errors column will bring up the errors pop-up window. Clicking on the number in the errors column for a specific entity will bring up the pop-up window with this entity in focus. Using the drop-down menus in the window, we can quick select a time range and choose the category of entities to view. Use the search field to find a specific entity and use the column headers to sort the list by the entity name or the number of errors. With an entity selected, the list on the right will update with the errors applicable during the time frame selected above. If a role or device is already in an error state at the start of the time frame being used, it will also show up in the list even though the timestamp of the error is before the selected range. If available, the error message, source, and timestamp will be displayed for each one. The timestamps received from the SAM agents are in UTC or the Coordinated Universal Time. The time being displayed here has been converted to the time zone of the local machine running the browser. For example, if an error comes up from a role on a server that is in the Pacific time zone, but the browser viewing the error in SAM is in the Eastern time zone, the timestamps on this page will be in Eastern time. This makes it easier for you to see how long ago an error occurred based on your current time. If needed, select a different entity or category on the left to see more information, or click on the X on the top right corner of the window to close it. Finally, let's take a look at a few troubleshooting steps we can try if we're not seeing data from one of our systems showing up on the System Availability Monitor. The first step is to check that your SAM agent has been associated with a valid system. Otherwise, the data will not be linked anywhere on the SAM service in the cloud. From your server, run the Genetex System Availability Monitor Agent Program, click on Modify next to the Data Collection Status, and verify there's a check next to Data will be collected and linked to my system. The next step is to make sure the data can get from the server to the cloud through the site's internet connection. On the server that's hosting the SAM agent, open a web browser and type in the following URL. Once you hit enter, you should see a 403 error, forbidden access is denied. 
This is actually a good response because it means that it was able to connect and attempt to log in. If you get any other response, you'll need to check the network settings, such as the firewall, proxy, and domain name server.